News of the Times Serial Killer Saturdays Marcel Redero, The Child Mass Murderer Welcome to News of the Times. In today's episode, we are in a small village near Nantes, in the Landreau Commune. It is 1913. Fifteen-year-old Marcel Redero has been hired as a workhand at the farm of Mr. Mabit and family. Things are not going well. Marcel believes himself to be ill-treated with the family who he believes are making jokes at his expense and who hit or slap him and call him lazy. And then one day, Marcel just snaps. In today's episode, we look at the build-up and the horrific crimes of 15-year-old mass murderer Marcel Redero in today's episode of Serial Killer Saturdays. We hope you enjoy the show. Setting the scene, it is 1913 in rural France, in the small village of Basbrig near Nantes, in the Landreau commune. It is pre-World War I France. Life in rural France in 1913 was characterised by a blend of tradition and the early impacts of modernization. While urban areas were experiencing the effects of industrialization, rural communities maintained a more agrarian and traditional way of life. The majority of people in rural France were engaged in agriculture. Farming was the primary source of livelihood and communities relied on crops, livestock, and other agricultural activities. Farming methods were often traditional, with horses or oxen used for ploughing. Rural communities were close-knit, with strong social ties among villagers. Life revolved around the village square, the church, and communal activities. Villages often knew each other well, and social interactions were an essential part of daily life. Unlike urban areas, rural regions had limited access to modern amenities. Electricity and indoor plumbing were not widespread, and many households relied on traditional methods for cooking and heating. Educational opportunities in rural areas were more limited than in the bigger towns. One-room schools were common, and education levels varied. The curriculum often reflected the needs of rural life, with a focus on practical skills for agriculture. This was the world of Marcel Redero. Coming from a large family of ten children, Marcel's only option was to be taken on as a workhand or to be apprenticed to learn a trade if he was very lucky. As was usual at the time, a place is sought for him to work as a farmhand. What could be better than the Mabit family with whom the Redero family are friendly with? Mr Mabit agrees to take young Marcel on in June of 1912, but there are problems almost immediately. In letters from him to his family, Marcel writes of his unhappiness and how he is certain he is disliked within the family. Drawings at the time show a dark side to Marcel as he looks to be envisioning killing the family. Mr. Mabit himself seems to have been something of a workhorse, not surprising with his own farm and with an expectation of ensuring he got the full value out of Marcel that he could. Marcel goes on to say in his letters that the Mabbits act nicer and friendlier in front of his parents upon their visits, but when he is alone in the Mabbit family, his situation is very different. Marcel's family and the Mabbit family have always been friendly with each other, adding to the strained relations with Marcel. The crime. On the morning of the 1st of October 1913, 
Neighbours notice that all is unusually quiet in the Mabbit household. Little Joseph, four years old, is sitting on the steps of the house, all alone. Mrs. Mabbit is eight months pregnant with her fifth child. Neighbours are concerned and go into the open house to investigate. From the Nottingham Post, the 2nd of October, 1913, Boy tells how he killed seven people. A callous confection. Wiped out family because Master blackguarded him. Further details are to hand regarding the terrible tragedy near Nantes, in which seven persons were cruelly murdered and a whole household, save for a child of four, was wiped out. The murderer, who was captured yesterday a few hours after the crime was discovered, is a farm boy of fifteen. He acknowledged his guilt and recounted the story that of sevenfold butchery with brutal cynicism. In the village of Bayas Brias, not far from Nantes, lived a family of farmers named Mabit, composed of the father, aged forty, the mother, an old and bedridden grandmother, and four children, one of them a baby in the cradle. Two servants, a girl and a lad of fifteen, were attached to the farm. Yesterday morning, some neighbours surprised that none of the Mabbits were stirring, paid a visit to the farm. The doors were open and they went in. The first thing they saw was the body of the farmer, Michel Mabbit, lying face downward on the floor of the storeroom in a pool of blood. His throat had been cut from ear to ear. In the kitchen lay the dead bodies of Madame Mabit and her servant Marie Dugost, with their throats cut also. In the next room they found a fourth corpse, that of the old grandmother lying in her bed with the same terrible gash in the throat. Finally, in another room lay three of the children dead, two of them on the floor, the youngest in his cradle, and beside them, speechless with terror and trembling in every limb, the only survivor of the massacre, a boy of four. The Assassin's Story Near the bodies of the three children lay the murderer's weapon, a great knife, very sharp, such as is used trimming the vine. Suspicions pointed not uncertainly to the farm lad, Marcel Redereau as the author of the butchery. The police arrested him later as he was on his way to the farm of his parents in the neighbourhood. Without the least sign of sorrow, without indeed seeming to realise the terrible nature of the charge against him, he confessed to the crime. His only regret, he said, was that one member of the family should have escaped his vengeance. Without a tremor, in his voice, with almost a sort of pride, he told the story. Tuesday night at ten o'clock I was with my master in the storeroom. He made a remark which I considered unfair. A discussion broke out, and as he turned his back to me, I took my vineyard knife and drew it across his throat. He fell, bleeding a great deal, and then did not move. Blinded by the blood, I entered the farm, where the first person I found was Mabit's mother. I had the knife in my hand, and with it I cut her throat. She screamed, and at her screams, Madame Mabit and the servant ran into the room, so I cut their throats too, one after the other. Furious crowd. The assassin then explained that, Drunk with blood, he next entered the room where the children, aged eight, seven, and two, lay asleep, and he cut their throats. It was lucky, he said, for the fourth, that he was in another room, or I should have killed him as well. Intelligence of Redoro's arrest soon spread throughout the countryside, and on his way to the village prison, he had to be protected by a large force of gendarmes from the fury of the crowd. When Redero was arrested, his clothes were caked with the blood of his victims. He had struck his last blows with such frenzy 
that the half of the knife, or rather short chopper, with which the murders were committed, was found broken off short. Redero's only explanation of his crime is, he, that is, his master, blackguarded me. However, it is thought that he may have wished to appropriate Mabbit's savings, a sum of ninety pounds. Redero, who has been employed at the farm since June last, was looked upon as a sullen and not very trustworthy lad. The exchange correspondent in Paris says that when arrested, Redero said, I don't know what I have done, but I was drunk for blood. The bloodbath is astonishing in this quiet country village where everybody knows each other. Marcel, it is recalled, has never shown any hint of previous violence as the locals gather to try to understand the horror bloodbath of a respected family in the community. Marcel himself remains icily calm and freely admits his crimes. From the Manchester Courier, the 2nd of October, 1913. Murders by boy. Quiet sleep after crime. Family almost wiped out. A 15-year-old boy was arrested at Nantes yesterday, telegraphs Reuter, on a charge of killing seven persons with an enormous axe. He is reported to have confessed to the crime. The boy whose name is Marcel Redero, was a servant employed by a man called Mabit and his wife, who work a farm in the village of Bazabig, in the commune of Landro, near Nantes. At ten o'clock on Tuesday night, while Mabit was working a wine press with Rodero, a dispute arose between them, and the boy, seizing a large axe, cut the farmer's throat with it. He then went into the kitchen and murdered Madame Mabit and a maid called Marie Dugast. The farmer's mother, who was sleeping in another room, was the next victim, and finally the boy entered the children's bedroom and killed three of the farmer's children, aged respectively eight, seven, and two. A fourth child, aged four, was fortunately overlooked. Redero, who ha had inflicted horrible wounds on Madame Mabit, who was in a delicate condition, then quietly went to bed. On being taken into custody yesterday morning, he at once admitted his crime. The boy was considered of a lively disposition and a good-hearted one, an intelligent worker. He belonged to a respectable farmer's family in which there were ten children. Redero, whose appearance is frail, declared that he did not wish to kill his employer, but when he saw him lying bleeding on the ground, he lost his head and was afraid that other members of the family would come. He then went into the house and killed the inmates. He added that he spared the four-year-old child because it was asleep. France has difficulty knowing how to process a 15-year-old, still regarded as a child, with this kind of mass killing. As there is no children's court in place, Marcel is tried as an adult in an adult court. What comes across repeatedly is that Marcel does not seem to grasp the horror of what he has done. From the Derby Daily Telegraph, the 4th of March, 1914. Boy of 15 on trial for six murders. The young murderer appeared but little impressed with the enormity of his horrible crime, although he cried when the presiding judge remarked that all that was known of the actual crime was through Redero himself, since he had killed all the witnesses. Marcel goes on trial. There is no question of his guilt, as he has freely confessed. Instead, the main focus of the trial is to establish whether the murders were derived 
from any insanity on Marcel's part. Marcel is interviewed by psychologists of the day. Marcel's testimony holds the key as to whether he could be deemed insane at the time or not. From the register, the 15th of November, 1913, Tales of France, a sevenfold murder, tragedy and pathos. Before Michel Mallet, the examining magistrate of Nantes, Marcel Redereau, guided by the questions of his examiner, told calmly and coherently recently the story of the sevenfold murders committed by him at the farm of Bas Brias. Quite frankly, he avowed his hatred for Mabit, the farmer, and his master. He was always scolding me, and he was always striking me and calling me lazy. It was lazy all the time. I got to hate him with all my heart. Tell us what happened in the storeroom, Master Judge. The Tragedy It was half past ten, said the lad. We had been working for hours. I had mounted the wine press, and my master was at the bar crushing the grapes. Suddenly he turned to me and said, Shove, won't you? I have never seen anyone so lazy as you. Always the same word, lazy. It infuriated me. I jumped down, seized a mallet, slipped behind him and struck him on the head. He fell in a heap. Stupefied, I looked at him as he lay there for some minutes. Then his mouth opened and he groaned. I was afraid his groans would be heard, so I took the grape chopper and drew it across his throat. Then I threw down the chopper and slipped out. I hoped that everyone would be in bed and that I should not be seen, but there was a light on in the kitchen. Madame Mabit was there, sewing with Marie the maid. She saw me and called, where is the master? I was afraid, and without replying, I ran back to the storeroom, picked up the grape chopper, then I slipped into the kitchen and got near the two women before they saw me, and I struck at the throat. Marie fell first. The mistress gave a great cry, which terrified me. I struck her again and again. It seemed as if she would never die. If she had kept Quiet, Madame Mabit's cries awakened her mother, who began to call for help. That was her destruction. I should have spared the old woman, said Redero, if she had kept quiet. And why did he kill the children? asked the magistrate. Because they woke up and began to cry, was the answer. I was afraid that somebody would hear them and come. That is why I killed them all. And what of little Joseph, who alone survived the night of the massacre? asked the magistrate. Why did you spare him? He did not make a sound, so I overlooked him, was the reply of the boy assassin, whose cool and collected behaviour since his arrest points to his complete responsibility for his acts. Hate and fear were the motives of his sevenfold crime. It was hatred that the that armed his hand against Mabit, and fear that changed murder to massacre. With his testimony and a review by several medical experts, Marcel is deemed completely sane, with no question of his being completely guilty. Some questions regarding potential dementia are rejected. Marcel is fully responsible for his crimes. The decision must be made whether Marcel will be executed or receive a sentence of penal servitude. From the Register, the 6th of March, 1914, seven murders, 20 years imprisonment. Five months ago, a fearful tragedy was reported from the village of Basbridge near Nantes. Marcel Redereau, a 15-year-old farm boy, was alleged to have quarrelled with his employer, whose name was Mabit, seized an axe and fatally gashed the man 
in the throat. The lad then slew Mabit's wife and maid and her mother, who was asleep in a bedroom. Finally, he hacked to death three of Mabit's children. A fourth, aged four, was overlooked. The juvenile monster then quietly retired to bed and was arrested in the morning for the seven murders. Before the magistrate of Nantes, the youth calmly detailed the circumstances of his crime. He avowed that he had an intense hatred of Mabit, who infuriated him by calling him lazy. When he was captured, he said, Yes, I killed them, and I am glad of it. The trial of Redero has been concluded, and the lad has been sentenced to twenty years' imprisonment. The imprisonment, rather than execution, is due to his young age. Postscript. The case of Marcel Redero is used to push forward the requirement of a children's court for youth crimes. Marcel died in prison at the age of 18 from tuberculosis. Marcel's family, now outcasts in their own village, sell up and move to the south. That concludes this episode of Serial Killer Saturdays, Marcel Redoro, the child mass murderer. We very much hope you enjoyed the show. If you did enjoy the show, we will be grateful if you could like or subscribe to our little channel. We upload five days a week. Mondays are murderous as we delve into the dark side of Regency and Victorian crime. Wednesdays are wicked, where we pull together stories with a similar theme, such as Doctors of Death. Fridays are frightful, where we look at crimes in a location, such as stories from the stage to murder and scandal in the aristocracy. Saturdays is Serial Killer Saturdays, where we investigate serial killer stories from the past. And Sundays is a bit of fun, with a unique mini murder mystery where you, the listener, have a chance to solve a murderous riddle. On the last Sunday of the month, we offer a two-hour compilation of stories based around a theme. Thank you again for watching and listening. This has been News of the Times, and I am Robin Coles.